His question is that in Ram Charitmanus, Goswami Tulsidas has written that you get human body after immense tapas, immense good karma, after a lot of traveling through many, many, many species. If it's that rare, which scriptures have us believe, then why is there still so much corruption in the world? Why are people still suffering from mental afflictions? Why do people still have urges and challenges that quite well may be equated with animalistic tendencies, the challenges of animals. If we have already gone through so much, then why are we going down again? What is the reason or reasoning behind it, if any? Are we heading towards downfall again? That's uh, this uh, gentleman's question. Right. You know, there is no doubt that as human beings, we have been through many, many different species, many, many life forms. We've been dogs, we've been cats, we've been cows, we've been creatures of the water, creatures of the air, we've been creatures of the land. But even though we are human beings, not each one of us is truly equal when it comes to consciousness. The potential of every individual may well be the same, but the consciousness of every individual is a different matter altogether. There are 8.4 million species on the planet, and there are 8.4 million types of consciousness people possess. There are people who have the consciousness of a, a, a fox. They're very cunning. They, you won't even know, they're very sweet in front of you, but they're actually very cunning in your heart. There are people who have the consciousness of a parrot. They just can't shut up, no matter what you tell them. <laughs> there are people who have the consciousness of a lion. They will pounce at you, even if you haven't done anything wrong. There are people who have the consciousness of a wolf. They would uh, have a different agenda than what they're pretending to be. This is what spiritual evolution is all about eventually. Purifying yourself to the degree where you attain a consciousness that could at least be called human consciousness. Somebody asked me the other day, who am I? And I said, you know, to say that we are the soul, I am the soul, it's simply a matter of saying most people don't feel that way. Sometimes you are the body, sometimes you are the mind, sometimes you are just your senses, the sum total of your senses, sometimes you are consciousness, sometimes you are beyond that. When somebody says to you, oh, you look uh, very uh, beautiful today and you smile and you feel great, at that time you are not the mind, you are not the soul, you are simply the body because your body is responding to the compliment you just got. If they say to you, oh, you are an idiot, which I don't think is a compliment, uh, and, and you react 
and you think, how dare he say that to me? At that time, you are your mind. They have assessed or passed a judgment on your mental level by calling you an idiot. And then your mind will react. If they say, oh, you are always sad, at that time, your emotions. If, you say, if they say you're always calm or, or you know, always content, maybe you are consciousness at that time. So similarly, what happens when somebody is born? He used the word vasana. Vasana is basically the tendencies of the mind. But they have no permanent home in your heart. That vas means to exist, na means to not exist. Vasna. They don't actually permanently exist. They come and go like waves in an ocean. Even though waves kind of are pretty much constant, so are vasanas. Shriram yad vapnoti yupchat kramti shra Grihtetani sanyati vairgandhani vasha Like wind travels and takes a scent of air when from, in from, from the flowers when soul travels, it takes the tendencies of the mind, so-called vasanas. So when somebody is born, they are born with certain tendencies of the mind. The key difference between somebody who's realized himself or herself versus somebody who's just trying to get there, the primary difference is their ability to rise above their urges. The primary difference is for them to be able to remain situated in the highest level of their consciousness. That's why we do any japa. That's why we do any sadhana. That's why we do any penance, any repentance, any confession. That's why we do any rituals. That's why we pray. We do all these things so we may purify ourselves. The three modes of material nature, the mode of goodness, the mode of passion and the mode of ignorance. Goodness being sattva, passion being rajas, and ignorance being tamas. They are constantly battling amongst themselves. Constantly. Sometimes somebody says something bad to you and you don't react at all. You feel very calm, you say, whatever. At that time, you're in your mode of goodness. Sometimes somebody says something not even so bad to you and you feel that reaction. I will teach you a lesson. That's mode of passion. And sometimes they may not even have said anything bad to you. They may just ask, how was your day? And you lash out, what do you care? Or something like that. That's your mode of ignorance. So self-purification or evolution of consciousness is or expansion of consciousness for that matter, is always remaining or trying to remain as much as possible to firmly establish in your mode of goodness. Because every day the world will challenge you. People at home, people at work, people on the road, the governments, the departments and the banks, everything. Life is a big challenge. In some countries, it is a greater challenge than others, but that's beside the point. So, people will test you, people will hurt you, the world will repeatedly uh, inflict emotional harm, emotional injury on you. Because everybody is so tired, and everybody has so many desires in their life, most of which are unfulfilled, that people can only see what they want. And in doing so, they will hurt you. But when they hurt you, and how you react in that situation determines completely what kind of consciousness you are situated in. And that's why people still are corrupt, because people have a lot of desires. And when you have desires that you, that you just want to get fulfilled at any cost, naturally, the word I just used, the phrase, at any cost, then you would bypass everything you possibly can without looking bad in anybody's eyes to, to get what you're after. 
imam prapasya manuvartham constantly krishna says most people they as soon as they attain something they're already they're already worrying and talking and thinking about the next goal this is the life of most people and to rise above this fundamental desire to fulfill your desire that's why you have to kind of understand your mind the more you understand it the more you get familiar with it that which could be done by way of service to the world service to the mankind uh, by praying properly or by meditating and so on they purify you and then you start to radiate a certain kind of energy when you st- yourself start to live in mode of goodness more and more people around you will start to live in mode of goodness as well because this world is made up of uh, us we are the people we can only control ourselves i can only take guarantee of my conduct my behavior my words my actions my speech my thoughts i cannot take guarantee of anybody else at all because people go through their own challenges when you are trying to purify yourself you are going against the uh, the very basic fabric you are made up of that is the uh, the never ending chattering nature of mind the mind is constantly talking to calm it down to bring it to a level where you are at peace it's not easy but the good news is it's quite doable you know it's not easy to get to a stage where you have an effortlessness in your state of peace you have to put in a lot of effort repeatedly we talk about mindfulness and so on but mindfulness is hard work doesn't come so if you stay true to your degree of contribution to the society then this world will increasingly become a better place and the temptations are always going to be immense and great and phenomenal whether you fall for those temptations or you stand against those temptations or you go with the flow with those temptations that's your personal matter an elephant needs a lot more to eat compared to a cow so some people need a lot of fodder for their emotional satisfaction their high maintenance you have to reassure every single day look everything's going to be all right i still love you and so on some people need a lot of physical food to sustain their bodies some people need a lot of emotional food some people need a lot of spiritual food food everybody requires food is the basis of sustenance so all you have to do is shift the nature of your food from you still need physical food by the way but more and more less emotional and more spiritual if people were to start taking responsibility for their own actions and own life it actually would become a much better place always it's been always like this that at any given time people of that time felt that the society was actually heading downhill if you read a scripture as old as 1000 years old or 500 years old or 400 years old or 2000 years old it's always oh society is going down but society is eternally changing because nature is eternally changing and all we have to do is we have to retain our goodness in challenging times and the world will become good naturally